Good morning, Highway Online. I'm so glad you're with us here this morning at Highway via this medium of online service. And if you're our guest this morning, we want to give you an extra special welcome. And we want to know who you are. We want to send you a little more formal welcome in the mail. So you can let us know that you're here with us in one very simple way. You can just pick up your phone and text the word welcome to 416 416- 267-1189. That's the number here at the church, and it's on the bottom of your screen as well. Just text the word welcome and follow the prompts so we can gather the information we need to send you that more formal welcome. But we welcome you here this morning to Highway Online. And we'd like you and everybody else to take part in the chat this morning. The chat is an important tool that we have here because it allows you to know that you're not watching alone, that you're not just isolated, but we're here gathered together. It allows the other people that are watching to know that they're not alone as they see you say hello. And this morning it's even kind of a little more important because I'm not here live with you in the service as I'm up uh, preaching this morning in Uxbridge helping our district out uh, once again. So the more you say hello to each other and the more you chat back and forth to each other, the better that is, especially on a day like today where I'm not here live with you. So take part in the chat. To take part in the chat is real simple. You just have to subscribe to the channel and the chat should be there for you. And just make sure you say hello to everybody. I do want to share a few announcements really quick with you this this morning. First of all, there's no Zoom kids or junior highs this coming Friday as it is a PA day in our school district. So no Zoom kids and junior highs this Friday evening. Ladies, I hope you're paying attention because I want to share an important announcement with you about your upcoming Ladies Christmas Extravaganza. It's going to take place on Saturday, November 25th at noon here in the church building. Um, This is a potluck. There'll be games, there'll be prizes, and the Women's Committee has a great event planned out for you. But we need you to sign up, and you need to sign up by the 19th of November because that's the deadline so that um, the ladies committee can make sure we've got all the food covered and everything else uh, with the potluck. So because you're online, if you're not gonna be in the building before November 19th, which is next Sunday, uh, you can let someone know that you wanna be part of the ladies Christmas extravaganza by just sending a quick email to highway at highway gospel and someone will get in touch with you to let you know what's happening, to give you the details, and to get get the details they need from you about what you bring, what you will be bringing to the potluck. I'll also let you know that there is childcare available, and that there is an optional, it's completely optional, gift exchange. It's kind of a bring a gift, take a gift. So if you bring a gift, you get to take a gift. If you don't bring a gift, don't take a gift. That would be stealing. But uh, bring a gift, take a gift. Uh, keep the gifts gifts at twenty dollars or less which is uh, the limit they've put on that. So the gift exchange is also part of this if you want to take part of it, but you don't have to. We don't want anybody to feel pressured. So ladies, plan to be here on the 25th and plan to make sure you sign up by next Sunday at the latest. Also want to let you know, All Church Prayer is coming up the next day after the ladies' Christmas extravaganza on Sunday, November 26th here in the building at 6 p.m. So if you live local, plan to be with us as we pray together as a church. And finally, I want to let you know, men, this is for you. We have a men's breakfast coming up on Saturday, Saturday, trying to go too fast here, Saturday, December 2nd at 9 a.m. I know that's early, it seems early for me, but probably for most of you it's not. Saturday, December 9th, December 9th, December 2nd at 9 a.m., There's a sign-up sheet at the info kiosk if you're going to be in the building. If you're not going to be in the building and you want to join us for the men's breakfast, you need to let me know by the 25th of November. So you can do that again by just sending an email to Highway at Highway Gospel Church. Sorry, Highway at HighwayGospel.ca and just say you're interested in the men's breakfast and I will get in touch with you about that. There's a cost for that breakfast of $5.00. But men, plan to be with us as we will share some pancakes and some some breakfast meat and some coffee and juice 
and just have a great time together. I have someone coming to share a testimony as well. It's a great opportunity for you to invite a friend in a, to a non-threatening church event. So men, plan to be here and plan to bring someone with you if you can. I want to take this time to thank everybody for their continued faithfulness to the mission and ministries here at Highway Gospel through your giving. We thank you for that, and we remind you there's four ways to give. You can e-transfer us. You can use the Tithely app. You can go to our website, highwaygospel.ca, and click the Give button. Or you can mail a check. Please don't mail cash. But once again, thank you for your continued faithfulness. This is a good time for you to open your YouVersion app. If you want to follow along with Pastor Dan's sermon notes for this morning, you just download the YouVersion app if you don't already have it. Open the app. Go to events, look for Highway Gospel, and you can follow along with Pastor Dan's sermon notes this morning. I want to encourage you today. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and check us out at highwaygospel.ca. All the information I've just shared with you, plus more, is included there. So it's a great place to go to keep track of what's happening here at Highway. Now before we go into our time of worship, let's just pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that we can gather through this medium, that we can hear your word, that we can worship together, that we can pray together. So Lord, right now, wherever anyone is at, right now watching this, Lord, touch them. If they need healing, heal them, Lord God. If they need an emotional healing, heal them today, Lord God. If they need forgiveness today, forgive them, Lord. Heal bodies, minds, and hearts today. And Lord, speak to us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. Have a great rest of the service. And remember, Highway is a place to belong, and you belong here. I tried so hard to see it took me so long to believe that you'd choose someone like me to carry your victory. Perfection could never earn. You give what we don't deserve. And listen, you take the broken thing. And raise them to glory. Sing it out, church. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you won. And I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. I am seen. The one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see You're teaching me how to receive it So let all the striving see This is, this is my to receive it so let all the strivings this is my victory cause you are my champion giants fall when you stand undefeated every battle Yes. 
I do. Jesus has given me. And when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the uh, Do you believe it? Come on. Jesus has given me. Good to have you back with us as we continue the series, The Awe of God. I trust that you've taken the opportunity over these last number of weeks to dig into this series, that you had an opportunity to get your hands on the book, The Awe of God, and you've been doing the daily readings with us and staying on track as we dig into a better understanding of the idea of the fear of of God or the fear of the Lord. Um, we've been taking time in the last four weeks as we began this series to take a look at this topic, the fear of God, and come to a fuller and deeper understanding of it. I want to remind you that to say the fear of the Lord doesn't mean we're talking about being afraid of God, but rather that we are coming to a place where we can embrace God for who he is, all of him, uh, that we could understand the reverence and the awe that is due him, that we could understand what it is to walk in obedience to him. That's what we spent last week on, was walking in obedience, and obedience brings us to a greater fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is not being afraid of God. It's coming closer 
to God. This week, we're going to deal with the topic, the idea of intimacy with God. See, let's be honest. We live in a world that's not quite sure about God. Um, to some, there is no God. God doesn't exist. He's, he's never been, never has been, never will be. To others, uh, they see God as a, a God who's distant, that maybe somewhere, you know, there's this higher power, this higher being, this, this God, but he's not really involved in the events of our lives. He's, he's kind of a far off. He's distant. He's, he's, he's kind of just amusing himself by watching us as we go through our lives. Others, others feel that there's a, a God who's always angry that there's a God who demands justice, that there's a God who watches over us just waiting for an opportunity to punish us and to, to bring harm to us as a, a kind of get-even thing. Uh, but I want to assure you today, none of that is correct. None of that describes who God is. That is not the truth about God. The truth is this, that God loves mankind. God loves you. God loves you so much that he chose to come near to his creation. We're told at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, the very first book, that uh, God would come in the cool of the evening and walk and talk with Adam and Eve. Now, I, I choose to believe that that's a literal walk, that uh, God would come and just spend time, and God would would build relationship, and there was no barriers between mankind and God. But then sin entered the picture. Sin brought this barrier between mankind and God, but God made a plan. God made a plan to redeem his creation, to restore relationship between himself and people. And so God chose to come close to us once again. He sent his one and only son, we call him Jesus. He's actually the Christ or the Messiah. He came, and we know the Christmas story. He's born of a virgin, a miraculous birth. And Jesus would minister on this earth. He would show us the love of the Father. He would teach us about the heart of the Father. He would come to build a bridge to a relationship between mankind and God that would bridge over sin, over sin, yes. And, and Jesus would do that by dying on the cross and shedding his blood. And he died for all the sins of mankind for all time. See, Jesus' death and resurrection opened up a way for us to have a relationship with God. He opened up a way for us to have intimacy with God. So you need to understand this. You need to understand where intimacy begins. Think about your own close friends. Think about your family even. Think about those who are closest to you. Why? Why are those closest to you? Well, yes, you've become friends. Uh, you've spent time together. You've probably shared hearts together. Maybe you've walked through some great experiences of life together. Maybe they've been there for some of the harder points of life, but you've done life together, you've grown together, and relationship is built, and you know each other, and that's what it is. You've known each other and grown with each other, and that is a picture of what it is to have intimacy with God. There's a story about Moses. It's in Exodus 33. It begins in the first, the second half of verse 12. It says, you have told me I know you by name, and I look favorably on you. If it is true that you look favorably on me, let me know your way so I may understand you more fully and continue to enjoy your favor. Now see, here's Moses as he's 
talking to God and he's he's telling God that, you know, I want to have a deeper relationship with you, God. See, Moses wasn't content just to know about God. He wasn't satisfied to, to, uh, to have God know him. No, Moses didn't just want to have knowledge about God. No, Moses wanted to know God in that intimate way, in that close friendship type of way. You see, God knows you personally. You're not just a number to him. God knows you as an individual. He knows you by name. And here's a few scriptures that describe to us how God knows us. Psalm 139 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Amazing. Before you were even born, God knew you. You're not just a number. Matthew 10 says, And even the very heads of your head are all numbered. Now, isn't that a beautiful picture? It doesn't say God knows how many hair are on your head. He says they're all numbered. So, you know, this morning when one fell out, God said, I know that one. It's number 112. They're numbered. That's, that's how important you are to God. James 4, 8, we're invited, come near to God and he will come near to you. What an invitation that God says, if, if we approach him, he's not going to you know, rebuff us. He's not going to push us away. He's not going to turn his back and walk out the room. No, when we come close to God, he's going to come close to us. To have intimacy with God, you need to start with a proper understanding of who God is. See, God is holy and righteous. He is the holy, righteous God of creation. He is the truth of the world. He is the foundation of all knowledge. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The Bible describes him. He describes himself as the Alpha and the Omega. He is the first and the last. Before anything was, God is. And after everything is, God is. He is not to be trivialized. He is not to be underestimated or belittled. No, we need to have a proper understanding of God. You see, the starting point of intimacy with God is to have a proper understanding of the fear of the Lord. Another thing that we need to do if we want to grow in this intimacy with God is we need to avoid a false view of Jesus. So we're constantly bombarded with many thoughts and ideas today. I mean, there are way too many sources of information. I mean, we've got regular news. We've got social media. Don't, don't always trust that. We've got TED Talks and people's ideas. We have YouTube uh, where you can find all kinds of things. There's Google. Oh, we love Google, don't we? Uh, there's special interest groups and their agendas. There's, there's, we live in a world in a time when it almost feels like we have information overload. Like we're bombarded from all kinds of places and all kinds of things. And, and what's true and what isn't, what's factual, what's not, what's somebody's opinion and what is fact. Well, did you know there's something called illusionary? truth effect. It's a real thing. It's kind of scary because this illusionary truth effect that describes how when we hear the same false information repeated and repeated and repeated and repeated again, we often get lulled into a sense of believing it to be true. For example, how many of you know that if you take vitamin C in the winter, it's going to help you from catching a cold. It's going to, you know, help you stay healthy. Well, you know, that's illusionary truth effect. There is no scientific evidence to prove that vitamin C helps you or prevents you from catching a cold. Now, if you're taking vitamin C for a long time before you get a cold, there's a little bit of possible uh, 
scientific evidence to say it'll help you recover faster, but you've been taking it before you caught the cold. You see, we've just heard that. I've heard that all my life. People say, oh, you're not feeling good. Just grab a handful of vitamin C. Go ahead. And, but there's no scientific. But we've just been bombarded with that for so long that we accept it as truth. See, there are many people who have this truth effect, illusionary truth effect, when it comes to Jesus. There are many people who have the wrong idea about Jesus and about God. Maybe maybe they've been exposed to some misunderstanding. Maybe they they were brought up in a, in a way where Jesus wasn't given much thought. I mean, you can get all kinds of wrong ideas about Jesus from all kinds of many places. You can get it from friends, from family members. You know, you can get it. This one's scary. You can get a wrong teaching about Jesus from other Christians. Christians who have a false understanding or who are not mature enough yet. And they they may leave us in the wrong place. You, you have some churches who could not speak the biblical truth and not speak it with clarity. You could You could even have your own wrong thoughts about Jesus. Yeah. See, Paul writes to the believers in Corinth because they were beginning to tolerate some false teachings. He says this in 2 Corinthians 11, you happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach, or a different kind of spirit than the one you received, or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. See, Paul was warning the church. Paul, Paul's warning us too, but he's warning them about being easily swayed into a false teaching and a false understanding of Jesus. He wants to make sure that they were not falling into a false view and following down a wrong path. We need to be careful about how we see Jesus. See, are we accepting everything that Jesus said and taught in the Bible? Are we, are we fully aware of who Jesus of the Bible is? Or do we only embrace those things that fit what we want the Bible to say? We, what we want Jesus to be. Even what, what do we want God to be in our lives? Do we want the Bible to fit us, or do we, are we willing to let our lives fit the Bible? See, we can not be lulled into a false belief about who Jesus is and what Jesus says. Now, there's two things you can do to protect yourself from being lulled into this false understanding of Jesus. And I've already told you the first one. It's but you must allow the Word of God to reveal the truth about Jesus. See, if you're constantly in the Bible, if you're constantly being exposed to the truth of the Word of God, it's going to keep you from accepting or being seduced even into a false view of Jesus. The Word of God is important so that we could understand who Jesus is and understand who God is. Secondly, Having a constant practice of genuine prayer will also keep you from believing a false Jesus. When you take time to pray, when you take time to speak to God, to speak to Jesus, when you take time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your life, they are going to keep you from falling into a false view of God. You'll be kept from following a false Jesus because you're going to be daily connected to who God and Jesus are. Last thing I want to leave you with is this idea that you can be friends of God. In church, we often sing a song that says, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. And he calls me friend. Now, we might think this is a little bit audacious, isn't it? That we're a friend of God. But the Bible shows us there are many people in the history of the Bible 
that have been friends of God. We, we see this in the life of Abraham. In James 2, James speaks, he says, And so it happened just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. Isn't that amazing? I mean, not just him. I mean, how many times do we understand that David was a man after God's own heart, even though David had some failures. But Moses was a man who spoke to God face to face as a man speaks to his friend is how that's described. These are examples of friends with God. See, Jesus speaks to his disciples at that final Passover dinner. The night that he's about to be arrested, Jesus is having dinner with his disciples, and he says this in John 15, 15. He says, I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. Now. You are my friends. Isn't that amazing? See, it is possible to reach the place of intimacy with God where you are his friend. But I want you to know this. This is not an automatic. This doesn't happen just because you accept who Jesus is and you receive salvation, the forgiveness of sins. This this isn't automatic. You need to grow in your relationship with God. Just like you grow in your relationship with your close friends. You might have many friends, but only a few close friends. Well, see, God wants to be your close friends. This is kind of what I talked about a couple weeks ago. I talked about that moment of salvation, and then we talked about working out your salvation, growing in the knowledge and living in the power of that salvation. And this is another aspect of that, that as we grow in closer relationship with God, we get to this place where we are no longer slaves, like he said to the disciples. But now you're no longer a servant, but you are my friend, where you get to know and understand the heart of God. And you can live in the place where God's heart is. And the only way that you can become a friend of God is to learn to live in the fear of God. As this week will now unfold, as as you follow along in your daily readings in the book, The Awe of God, hopefully you'll join with your connect group. You're going to dig deeper into this topic of intimacy with God. And so I encourage you this week to dig in. Dig in. There's just a couple weeks left. Let's finish this race well, the the campaign, the awe of God. Just before I close, I want to pause for a moment. As I've been talking about knowing Jesus, maybe you're watching, you're listening, And you're saying, you know what? I don't know Jesus. I might know about him, but that I'm not even sure. But I don't know him. That I've never truly accepted who he is. That I didn't realize that God sent Jesus because God wants to be close to me. And Jesus made that bridge over sin so that I can know God. Maybe today you're saying, you know what? I want to begin a relationship with God through the life and death of Jesus Christ. If that's you or you even just want more information about salvation, would you do me a favor? Would you pick up your phone? Text the word love to the number on the bottom of the screen, 416-267-1189. Just, just the word love. And then it's going to prompt you for your name and contact info. And please follow those prompts. And we will get back in touch with you in the coming days because we want to help you as you grow in a relationship with God today. As I close, I just want to pray for you that maybe as you've been watching, listening, 
as we've been talking about intimacy with God. Maybe right now you just want to close your eyes and bow your head. That you just want to take a moment, even as I'm talking, take a moment and just invite God to reveal himself. Just allow the Holy Spirit to take you to this place where you can begin to have a relationship, a deeper relationship, where you can move from the place of knowing God or knowing the Bible to a place of being a friend of God. Let me pray for you. Lord, I just thank you today that you are not the God who is distant or mean, that you are the God who is loving and caring. We thank you that you sent Jesus to this world so that we could have our sins forgiven and begin a relationship with you. Lord, I just pray today for all those who are just being honest with themselves and you right now, that they long for a better, deeper, more meaningful relationship with God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would make this possible, that you would come to their lives. Lord, that you would begin to reveal the love of God and the heart of God. Lord, that you would move us closer and closer to the heart of God today. We give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, I'm so glad that you joined us at Highway Online today. And I invite you to come back and join us again here next Sunday morning at 1030. Or better yet, if you're local to the Highway Building in Scarborough, come on down. We'd just love to meet you in person and, uh, and get to know you. So in the meantime, I want you to have a great weekend. Always remember this, that Highway is a place to belong and you belong here. Thank you.